please. Thank you so much. So it's very uh, good to be here. I would like to thank uh, the organizers for inviting me to this uh, next conference. So uh, I'm going to talk on uh, uh, recent, my recent work with uh, Professor Marek Fila of the Komenius University of Slovakia. So I will uh, talk about uh, this specific nonlinear partial differentiation of parabolic type, which is often uh, called uh, freestyle type equation. And here, uh, p uh, exponent p is uh, bigger than one, so it's superlinear. So it's uh, actually this is the prototype of the superlinear parabolic equations, and because of the superlinearity of the this nonlinear term, uh, the solution can Lower, I mean that the solution can go to infinity in finite time. So there are many, many studies on the Lua phenomena for this equation. So, it, it, so it's a, although this is a very simple equation, it has a surprisingly uh, rich mathematical structure. So recent direction, okay, recently also uh, many interesting properties were found for global solution, okay, not only a global solution. Global solution. So by global solution, I mean a solution of this equation defined for all time in the positive direction. So it's defined for uh, t in uh, from for some constant tau to infinity. So I call it the global solution it's defined in the positive half, positive directions for all time. And uh, actually, the global solution exists if the solution does not blow up. So this. So let me also define an uh, ancient solution, which is a solution defined for all time in the negative direction. So it's defined for, uh, from negative infinity to some constant tau. Of course, the parabolic equation is imposed in the negative time direction, so it is not a uh, trivial task to find such an ancient solution. And if uh, a solution is uh, defined for all time, then it's called an entire solution. So entire solution is, of course, a global solution and an ancient solution. And uh, the typical uh, ancient solution is a steady state. Of course, this, uh, you can easily see that this equation has a trivial solution. It's, uh, it's, equal to, it's identically equal to zero for all x and time t. So it's an entire solution. And then, so uh, the Levy property means that uh, if there is an entire solution, then whether or not, uh, the question is whether or not it's a trivial solution. So if, it's, uh, if any entire solution is a trivial solution, we call that, uh, that this equation satisfies the Levy type property. And the weaker uh, statement is that the uh, <coughs> weaker property is that if any entire solution must be a steady state. Okay, this equation may have a, a non-trivial steady state, and if any entire solution is a, a steady state, then uh, still we say that this equation enjoys the Liouville type property. So Liouville type property fails if uh, there exists a connecting orbit. Here, connecting orbit uh, means an entire solution that tends to steady states as t goes to plus and minus infinity. So they could be different. Okay, the steady state could be different. The steady state could be the same one. But anyway, it's a time-dependent solution which connects a steady state from another steady state. So it's defined for all time. But if it's time-dependent, time then it means that the equation fails to satisfy the Liouville type problem. So, uh, from another viewpoint, uh, connecting orbit is uh, actually very important for the study of the uh, dynamic of systems. So, uh, actually, connections between equilibria constitute a very uh, important theme in the theory of dynamic of systems because uh, connecting orbit plays a crucial role in the description of the structure of whole uh, solutions. In fact, for gradient-like systems, uh, the attractor of the dynamical system consists of only equilibria and connecting orbits. 
So, uh, if uh, there is no connecting orbit, then the uh, attractor consists of only uh, equilibria, so the structure is quite simple. But if there is if this the connecting orbit, then the structure of the dynamic solution of the dynamic system can be more complicated. And uh, especially in the large space dimension, then uh, the connection problem is uh, even more important than the higher dimensional case. And actually, it's related to the say, uh, structural stability of the dynamical systems. And uh, so in the 1D case, one-dimensional case, there have been uh, many studies in, uh, uh, from the 1980s. So these are uh, players for the theory of uh, connecting orbits for the part of linear power application. So Gronowski, Fiedler, Russia, Sujo Fusco, Dan Hendy, Joe Smola, and so on. So they are, you know, quite famous mathematicians. So they, they contributed uh, a lot of work for the study of the connecting, connecting problems. So in my talk, uh, we I discussed the uh, existence of connecting orbits for the physical type equation. So actually, I will prove, I will show that the for certain ranges of the exponent p, there does exist a heteroclinic orbit and a homoclinic orbit too. It depends on the parameter values. So p is very important. But uh, so in the sub sub in subcritical case, we cannot find such connecting orbits. But for supercritical case, we can somehow find such a connecting solutions. So uh, before uh, I talk about the connecting orbit, let me summarize the negative result about the existence of connecting orbits. So that means that I will first discuss the view uh, type property of the first type. So this is, uh, there actually there are many studies on, uh, on the Liouville type property. So for instance, the, this is the first result of uh, the uh, Liouville type property. Actually, Fujita proved that uh, if the exponent p is less than the so-called Fujita exponent, then there is no global solution. So in this range, in this range, uh, there is no global solution. So that means that there is no entire solution. So uh, in this range, we can we have no hope to find a positive connecting orbit yeah. or positive entire solution. But uh, if p exceeds this value, it actually also proves that there does exist a positive global solutions. But uh, so we have a hope to find a positive connecting orbit in this in this case. But uh, later in 1998, by uh, Bilo and Veron and also fit now and split, that if P is in this range, then there is no positive entire solution. Yes. This is a bit strange uh, number, but anyway, this is uh, larger than this number. Yeah. This is larger than this number. And it depends on the dimension n, but if anyway, this is larger than this number and less than the sum of its points, so n plus 2 or n minus 2. So in this strange uh, range, a bit strange, but uh, this might be a technical, it might be a switch, I don't know. But in this uh, parameter range, they prove that there is no positive entire solution. So then the solution can be, uh, so in, this, uh, in, this, in this range, there is a global solution. So the solution may glo exist globally in time, but cannot be an ancient, ancient solution. And uh, so this is about the positive uh, entire solution. And also this can be uh, extended to uh, soporific exponent if we slightly relax the notion of the uh, entire solution. And uh, so the DV property. So there is, uh, and this, uh, there is no positive regular steady state. So only trivial solution can be a steady state. Uh, yeah, no negative steady state. This is a well of uh, result by uh, Gilas and Sprock in uh, 1983. And uh, so in the subcritical case, they also proved that, that there is no positive radial entire solution. That is, if you restrict your attention to the radially symmetric solution, then there is no entire solution in this range. Yeah. This result is about positive entire solution. But if you limit your 
yeah. attention to the, the radial case, then it can be extended to the uh, subleft exponent. So this is about the uh, positive radial anti-solution, but very recently uh, these, uh, these people proved that uh, actually there is no radial anti-solution with finite number of zeros. So it's still radial, but it can change sign. Yeah. This is about sign changing solution. These are about the uh, positive solution. So that, of course this is a uh, stronger statement than this. For supercritical case, so that if p is uh, bigger than the uh, Sobolev exponent, then uh, we know that there is uh, one parameter family of a positive radial steady state. Of course, steady state is the uh, entire solution. So this readily said that uh, there exists a positive <coughs> entire solution in the supercritical case. And in fact, uh, this is uh, positive steady state can be uh, obtained by solving uh, this uh, second order differential equation under this uh, initial condition. And then uh, if you uh, solve this equation from zero by shooting, then uh, you can find a positive solution for, for any alpha. For any alpha, this equation has a positive solution. And it turns out that the solution is uh, strictly decreasing in, the, in R so R is the distance from the uh, origin, and uh, so it goes to uh, zero as R goes to infinity. So the profile of the steady state is like this one. So this is the R axis, so this is the distance from the origin, and uh, this is the uh, not the axis, not the, the profile alpha of R, so this is the solution. And alpha is initial value, so it's a radial symmetric, so uh, it's a something like a no, bump. Yeah. It's radial symmetric, it's positive in this, something like this. So for, for a supercritical case in the sense of Sobolev, we can always find the entire solution, I mean positive entire solution. So this is again a very strange exponent, but uh, very recently we have a we realize that this is a very ex important exponent for the study of uh, global solutions. So in this uh, parameter range, every positive radial steady state is unstable right, in any reasonable sense. Right? It's unstable in this range. But uh, in this is actually a very difficult range that no results has been obtained for or linear type property. Actually, I, I will show that there exists a connecting orbit in this case. And uh, if P uh, exceeds this uh, strange number, then uh, the steady state becomes stable. So this, uh, this exponent is just a borderline of the stability of the steady state. So in this uh, parameter range, every positive radial state is stable in some weighted space, in some weighted space, with the weight in the other infinity. All right, so this is about the stability of the steady state. And uh, uh, this is about the uh, a bit weak uh, statement about the real property. But uh, if P is in this range, if U is the ancient solution, Satisfying these inequalities, then it must be a steady state. Here, phi infinity denotes a singular steady state, which is explicitly written in this way. And here, uh, L is a constant depending on the exponent p and the dimension n. It's of its radius symmetric, but uh, because it has a negative exponent, it's, uh, it has its similarity at the origin. So this is the profile of the singular steady state. So what uh, this result is saying is that uh, if the solution is below this uh, singular steady state, and if, it, if the solution exists for all negative type, <coughs> it must be a steady state. So any ancient solution below this singular steady state has to be a steady state. This is a bit weak statement about the uh, type problem. So uh, 
this is a summary of the DV type property. And uh, now, how about the uh, connecting orbit? Uh, so the only negative values have been known. So this is the in this range there are no positive connecting orbit. This is, there is no radial connecting orbit. Then, but if P is bigger than this number, yeah, this is what uh, I want to study. I want to talk about. Today. So our results show show that if P is uh, between a sublet exponent and the new exponent PL, which is called a lacking exponent, given by n minus 4 over n minus 10, then we can find the homoclinic orbit. Homoclinic orbit means that it connects the trivial so from trivial solution to the trivial solution. So the solution starts from zero and becomes positive and goes to zero again. It's a homoclinic orbit. So it's such a solution exists in this range. But I see I don't know when P is bigger than this number. Okay. I, I'm quite pessimistic to find such a solution, but anyway, I have no result about uh, in the case when P is bigger than the, this exponent. And uh, also, if P is a slightly smaller range, we can find the heterochronic orbit, which connects uh, steady, positive steady state to the trivial state. So so this is a summary of the results which I want to talk today. And uh, the, our first, okay, this is a more precise statement about my, our results. So this is about the existence of a homoclinic solution. So suppose P is uh, in this range. So it's bigger than uh, n plus 2 over n minus 2 <coughs> and smaller than n minus 4 over n minus 10. Then uh, there exists a uh, positive and very symmetric entire solution of the first type equation with the following properties. The first property is that uh, the solution goes to zero as t goes to negative infinity with this order. So, okay, this is the negative exponent. So t goes to the negative direction. So this goes to zero. So this is the algebraic decay as t goes to negative infinity. And uh, also the solution tends to zero with, the, with this order. Again, the same order, but uh, this here, t is a positive number. So it's, it, 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 grow, it, it grows with this order and decay to zero with this order. So this is the, actually, as far as we know, this is the first example of the homoclinic orbit for semi-linear parabolic equations. Okay. So this kind of actually this kind of homoclinic orbit can be found in the system of equations. But in for the scalar equation, I believe this is the first example of the homoclinic orbit. Yeah. So because uh, uh, yes, is there any relationship with the that exponent to the scaling? This one. No, this one. This one. Yeah, yeah, it's related to the scaling. Yeah. Yeah, I'll explain it later. And uh, this, uh, so the, the, my, the, uh, my equation is a scale, scale of parabolic equation. But usually it has an energy, okay, energy function now. So energy is uh, decreasing. So usually we cannot find such a homogeneous solution because it's against the decreasing property of the energy function. But in, this, in our case, if the solution has an infinite energy, infinite energy, so it, it can actually it can connect to, from zero to zero. So this is uh, how the solution behaves like. Here is the similar steady state. Okay, the solution is sim very asymmetric, so it's very small. For if t is negatively large, and it goes like this. Okay, I must say, I must say that it has an intersection, two intersections with the single state state. It's very far away yeah. from zero. Okay, so this is a, a starting from zero. It's slightly larger, larger now, become larger and larger and larger. Still, they keep two intersection points, but eventually it loses its intersections and then going back to zero. Like this. Yeah. this is how the solution behaves like. 
So this is not a numerical computation, this is this. I draw this by hand. <laughs> <laughs> Just to, to, to give you uh, some insight about the behavior of solutions. Okay, so this is how the homogeneous solution behaves like. The outline of the proof is as follows. Uh, well, it, that proof consists of four steps. First step is to consider uh, the existence of a, of a positive backward self similar solution. Okay, I will extend the backward self similar solution later. And uh, second step is to show, okay, let's consider rather special solution of the equation. Then the next step is to show the instability of the uh, backward self similar solution. Okay, backward self-similar solution is an ancient solution, but it's not a global solution. It's an ancient solution, but grows up in finite time. Yeah. So it cannot be an uh, entire solution, but because if we use the stability of the backward self-similar solution, then we can show that uh, actually the, there is an ancient solution that converts to the backward self-similar solution, but does not show the block. So that that the ancient solution must actually exist globally in time and convert it to a four self-similar solution. So to to for so I use for the proof I use so-called self-similar solution. So I use uh, crucially the scaling invariance of the equation. So now I consider the equation with a power nonlinearity. It's a rather special nonlinearity. So uh, it enjoys a uh, it has a kind of scaling invariance, and uh, so this is uh, uh, this is only possible for such a special nonlinearity. So in a more general nonlinearity, it's very, very difficult to answer the question about the existence of uh, the collective moments. Okay, so this is the definition of the backward self similar solution. Suppose that, the, uh, okay, let me introduce this kind of scaling, uh, let's say spatial variable and time variable. So this is a rather a bit, uh, okay. This is a transformation from the the solution of u to some new function w, and if you transform the solution in this way, then this guy must satisfy the following partial differential equations. So because of this uh, strain scaling, here appear two uh, extra terms, and. Uh, if there exists a radial symmetric steady state of this equation, say w equals b of r, then that this uh, function must, must satisfy this second order differential equations. This is a rather simple uh, nonlinear differential equation, but it's not easy to analyze the properties of this, this solution. And anyway, if uh, if there exists a positive solution of this equation, then uh, you can find the special solution of the original equation E. So this is uh, actually, if there is a solution of this equation, this function satisfies the original equation. And it's called the positive radial backward cell similar solution. So you can see that the T is defined for only negative time. And actually, the solution goes to infinity in finite time. Maybe actually, at zero, it goes to infinity. So it is not the entire solution. It's a, only an ancient solution, or the very special one. So this is the, uh, a bit technical. Uh, this, this is about the result on the uh, distance of the backwards of the solution. So suppose P is in this range. So P is between uh, P as uh, so left and P left. Then there exists uh, some special constant, beta star, such that the solution B of the equation capital B has the following properties. First, at this special initial value, then the solution become, is positive for all our monotone decreasing in R and intercept exactly twice with the singular state. Exactly twice. So the singular solution is also a backward self singular solution. And if beta is uh, less than this critical number, then the solution vanishes at some finite level. So there is no positive solution under, under this uh, special backwards solution. 
So this is uh, though although this equation is uh, simple looking, the analysis is extremely difficult. But uh, anyway, the Lepin and the Galaxian of Vasquez proved that uh, these properties. And uh, very recently, Mizunuch proved that uh, this condition is essential. So that is, if p is bigger than uh, this exponent, there is no such solution. So for me, this, co this uh, the, so for the existence of connecting a homopolemic orbit, I have to I have to assume this this condition. But it seems to me this is now an uh, essential condition for the existence of connecting orbit. So this is the, the normal fact about the uh, backwards solution. So this is a picture. This is the single space state. It keeps two intersections. Yeah. So if uh, this is the profile of the function we are we are right, so we scale the solution of. But uh, if uh, for the original equation, then the solution starts from almost zero to close to zero, keep the two intersection point, and blows up in finite time. The second lemma is uh, about the uh, instability of the uh, backwards self single solution. So this said that, uh, that actually the solution is unstable. It's exponentially unstable. That is, if you consider the linearized eigenvalue problem, you could find a positive eigenvalue. So it's linearly exponentially unstable. The third step is uh, to show the existence of an ancient solution that is below the single uh, backward cell signal solution. Because backward cell signal solution is that turned out to be an uh, unstable one, we can find <coughs> an unstable manifold. Like, actually, it's not a manifold, but uh, anyway, we can find an unstable solution, okay, starting from the backward cell signal solution. And uh, now the solution is. Uh, Converts to the backward self similar solution as t goes to negative infinity. So this is the, uh, from the viewpoint of the uh, dynamical system, it's almost clear because if we can find a positive eigenvalue, we can always find a positive uh, manifold. So uh, it's intuitively clear, but in this case, the nonlinearity is supercritical, so we cannot apply directly the standard theory for infinite dimensional system, dynamical system. Okay. So uh, to show this, we used a recent paper by uh, Kao, Morita, and Ninomiya about the existence of uh, ancient solution. So they used a very clever uh, method. They uh, constructed a kind of approximate sequence of uh, ancient solu uh, solutions, and then by using a compression technique, and then its limit uh, is Actually, the Asia becomes the Asian solution. So I use uh, it's a, the, the technique does not apply directly, but we can um, use extend the ideas to show the existence of uh, such a solution. Okay. Uh, so this is the last number. So now we found uh, the Asian solution that is close to the backward self similar solution, but it's below the singular. Uh, backwards is similar solution. So it's a, it does not blow up. Actually, it converges to the self-similar solution. I mean, for self-similar solution. Here, uh, for self-similar solution is again a rather special uh, solution, which is written in this way. So f, is, f sub gamma is a function of a single variable here, and it satisfies this equation. <coughs> And in the supercritical case, for any gamma, this equation has a positive solution. And gamma is uh, related with the uh, backward cell similar solution. It must be determined for the property of uh, backward cell similar solution. Okay. They must have the same special decay rate. All right. So now, this is the idea how to prove the existence of a homoclinic solution. So the idea is uh, to use a uh, backward self similar solution, stable manifold, a solution of a stable manifold, and actually it turned out to be the entire solution, and it goes to zero with, with this rate. Yeah. 
So this is uh, actually connect kind of connection from a backward cell similar solution to the forward cell similar solution. So actually, it was uh, this this is this the second theorem uh, showed that actually in some limit it converts to uh, self similar solutions. That is, if you rescale the solution by introducing a parameter lambda. Here, lambda is a positive parameter, and uh, so u is a solution of the original equation, and introduce uh, this kind of rescaling. Then, because because of the power nonlinearity and the scaling bias, if u is a solution, then this u lambda is also a solution of this equation. Okay. In particular, if u is the entire solution, this u lambda is also an entire solution. So what happens when the uh, parameter lambda is varied? So the second th theorem shows that uh, if lambda goes to infinity, then it converges to the kind of a singular homogeneity covid. That is, okay, let u be the homogeneity covid constructed in, uh, in theorem one. Then uh, the rescaled solution approaches the singular homogeneity covid as lambda goes to infinity in the following sense. First, for a negative time, uh, as lambda goes to infinity, the solution, the rescaled solution, tends to the bump cell similar solution, uniformly in space and time. And for, for positive time, the solution converges to a bump cell similar solution, uniformly in the space and time. So this is uh, actually complicated, but this, uh, this is the picture. So now the horizon axis is the time. So it defined for, from negative infinity to positive infinity. So this axis is the that's maximum of the solution. So as we said, this, suppose this is the, uh, this is the homogeneous solution. Okay, so this is starting from zero, it becomes <coughs> large a bit, then it goes to zero again. And these uh, these other the other blue lines uh, stand for the rescale solution. For lambda small, then it's, it's this one. As lambda goes to infinity, this guy is rescaled in this way. And as lambda goes to infinity, this this one goes to infinity. The maximum goes to infinity, and it converts to the backward similar solution and forward similar solution. So in some sense, this is the uh, singular connection is obtained by taking the limit. So this singular connection was uh, actually already found uh, several years, well, ten years ago by Galactionov and Vasquez. So they showed uh, actually the considered homoclinic singular connections. But that their their motivation is. Uh, uh, how to uh, when the blow up occurs, they are, they are interested in how to extend the solution beyond the blow up part. But they did not uh, think of uh, this solution from the viewpoint of the connection connecting of it. Of it. But anyway, they proved the existence of a connecting homoclinic, single homoclinic of it. And uh, very recently, also Naito studied about. Uh, Precisely about the behavior of the uh, single homophilic solution. And uh, if, also in fact, for other types of equations, such singular connections were found already, say, Fila, Matano, and Fila Kolachik studied uh, equation with the exponential nonlinearity. They uh, use some people like let's say, u plus e to the power u. They found such a connecting, singular connecting orbit. But then, they, what they found is, uh, not the homoclinic of it, but uh, they found a heterochromic of it. It's a similar heterochromic of it. So these are, uh, this is the, that's the result for the com uh, homoclinic solutions. Uh, and the uh, remaining time, then I would like to discuss uh, a little bit, uh, explain a little bit about the distance of a heterochromic solution. No, not a, I will not give you a, the idea of the proof, but uh, you know, this is a, a statement.
statement. So in the, in this range, so this is a bit smaller than the previous case. This 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 exponent is smaller than the Levin exponent. So in this range, for every alpha, there exists an entire solution of the equation with the following properties. First, the solution converts to the regular steady state as t goes to negative infinity. With this order, so it's exponentially uh, unstable. The solution is regular steady state is unstable, that is exponentially unstable. And uh, now it uh, goes to uh, zero with this order. So it's a connection from a positive steady state to zero. Because the positive steady state is unstable, we could expect there must be a kind of uh, unstable manifold. But uh, as I explained before, uh, standard technique does not apply to this in the supercritical case. So we need some new idea. So this is about the existence of a heteroclinic orbit. But uh, because if P exceeds this number, the uh, radial steady state is stable. So we cannot extend this result beyond this number. So the, I use the, crucially, the instability of, of the steady state. This is the uh, interesting uh, solution. So it's an ancient solution exhibiting blow up. So suppose P is in this range. Then, then uh, there is an ancient solution with the following properties. First, uh, it's a uh, the solution tends to the steady state as t goes negative But in this case, the instability occurs to the positive direction. Okay. In the positive direction, the solution must blow up in finite time. Okay. In the negative direction, it goes to the trivial solution. But in positive direction, it goes to infinity, in finite time. The interesting uh, property for this uh, case is that the blow up is uh, occurs in uh, but in a uh, 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 generic way, that is, the blow up occurs, blow up is of type 1. So, type 1 means that the blow up is uh, of this order. So, it, this capital T is a blow up time. And uh, t, if T goes to capital T from below, then the solution goes to infinity with this order. Or oh, maybe this something wrong, so it must be a negative, a negative sign must be here. I'm sorry. And uh, so this might be a bit more technical, the only bit uh, white and blue progress might be interesting yet. Yeah. The last result is about the non-existence of ancient solutions. So suppose P is uh, in this range, then there is no ancient solution below the single state. Okay. If P is bigger than this number, there is uh, uh, actually I, I put, with the Peter Blanchik, I proved the uh, kind of a bigger property. So we proved that uh, only uh, the solution, only entire solution, has to be the uh, entire uh, steady state. But, uh, so in this range, we cannot expect the same result. So any there is no ancient solution below the single state. Of course, if the solution is bigger than the similar steady state as some, you know, some x, then it can exist for all negative times. So actually, it, we can find such a solution. But anyway, this is a, a, a partial result about the non-existence of ancient solution. So this is a summary of my talk. These are known facts. These are new results. So P, P is uh, in this range, there is no positive connecting orbit. Okay, this is known. In this range, there is no radial connecting orbit. So what is new now is that here is that if P is in this range, there is a heteroclinic orbit. So that means that the Lubeck property is not satisfied. Uh, so in this range, we have found that there does exist a homoclinic code. So we can, can extend this result to, uh, to this case. So now the difficult range is uh, P bigger than PL. 
So as I explained, if, uh, if P is bigger than PL, we cannot view, uh, view the result of all the distance of what back was a similar solution. <coughs> so I'm rather pessimistic to find uh, such a solution, but uh, anyway, I have, we have only discussed the positive solutions, but uh, for the side chain solutions, still we have a hope to find such a solution, but it might be a very, very difficult question to answer. Maybe this is the last slide. Yes, so thank you very much for your attention. We have uh, plenty of time. For Any of time? Yeah. Yes, we still have 10 minutes.